Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. Thanks for joining us for another segment of eWeek eSpeaks. Our special guest today is Lauren Bennett of ESRI, E-S-R-I. And Lauren is a data scientist with a very special mission. Welcome, Lauren. Hi, Chris. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm delighted. And I like your radio station gear. You look good. Really <laughs> Thank you. Our, co our uh, quarantine setups are all, I think, pretty unique. I, I like it. You get like a a view into somebody's life. Yeah, for sure. Tell us a little bit about your role at Esri. So I am the lead for our spatial analysis and data science software development team. I help us build the software that helps people understand their spatial data. Mm -hmm. And what is spatial da data? Spatial data. Um, well, it's most data. Um, pretty much everything happens somewhere. So it's the data we have on the location of where things happen and where things are. And I think one of the things that's really powerful about it is it's often this thing that connects disparate data too. So, you know, everything happens somewhere and then that context that you get from knowing where it happened is critical. It's like this key that connects the whole world together. Right, and esri has been around a long time, a veteran, Company well respected in this business. Yep, over fifty years. We just had our fifty-year anniversary. Pretty wow. crazy. Now, yeah, there just aren't that many companies in that category. So, no. Uh, and you've been with the company for you said thirteen years. Yeah, so thirteen years. That's great stuff. Okay, now there are special projects right now that Esri is working on. One of them has to do with COVID nineteen, and. Um, what I'm guessing is that you'll be connecting a lot of dots, triangulating information um, to help us understand the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you expand a little bit on that? Sure. So um, when COVID-19 uh, hit, we as a company got together and have played a really big role in how our our users and how the world is responding to COVID-19. So um, we have a program at Esri called the Dis Disaster Response Program that's been around for over 20 years. And through that program, we support our users in their response to these massive events, COVID being, I'd say, the biggest one we've ever been part of responding to. Mm -hmm. um, what we saw is that for one thing, the data being collected about COVID-19 is inherently spatial. Understanding where we have confirmed cases is a critical part of responding to the crisis. So people were immediately collecting the spatial data using ArcGIS, which is pretty much the software that underlies how spatial data is collected all over the world. And we immediately saw things popping up like the Johns Hopkins dashboard, which is a dashboard built on Esri technology that was being used to inform the whole world, the public decision makers about where the disease was, because that's kind of the first step. Um, then of course, knowing where it is, is just the beginning. We wanna do something about it. And so um, specifically my team being the team that builds our spatial analysis and data science tools, played a big role in trying to understand what our users were trying to do in terms of analysis. And one of the big things that they were trying to do was model the spread of COVID-19. And so there's uh, a ton of work being done by research institutions all over the world. And what we did was we pulled the best of what was out there and what our users were trying to do, brought it into our software um, and made it really easy for um, our users to take that data they've already collected to use it as input to doing this kind of spread modeling, these epidemiological models, and then putting that out in other dashboards, other decision-making tools to inform decision makers in terms of how do we allocate resources and, and what should we do? Is social distancing working? How long should we social distance? How do we reopen? Uh, all of these questions were starting to be answered using that spatial data and analytics on that spatial data. Yeah, and spatial data is the cornerstone for everything we're working on to try to, you know, figure out this 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 uh, COVID nineteen virus, mm -hmm. um, and it's being used uh, both, like you said, both for uh, decision makers and for the benefit of the public to see 
where spikes are happening, correct? In different yeah. areas? Absolutely. I mean, one of the big things that, especially in the beginning, one of the big things that was being talked about a lot, which as a data scientist was uh, really um, cool to see was, you know, everyone was talking about flattening the curve. And so we were seeing these epidemiological curves on the news and really everybody in the world was talking about spatial data science and how those patterns were changing. And so being able to see, okay, well now we're social distancing. This has been the impact of that social distancing was really important to helping educate the whole world about the value of some of these measures that had to be taken in order to do that flattening of the curve so that we could keep our healthcare system running the way that it was supposed to. I mean, most of the work in the beginning was about keeping our healthcare system healthy, because if right. we overwhelm the healthcare system, pretty much everything falls apart. And so there was a lot of decision making being done that's very spatial about making sure that the, the healthcare system stayed healthy where we needed it. Yeah, so important for, for the free flow of information and data at all times. It's all scientific truth and that you, we can't have too much truth these days uh, because truth is often in the eye of the beholder, unfortunately, and that's not the way it should be. And uh, you and I are both looking at truth in our own ways. I look at it from, you know, using letters, using numbers. Yeah. And uh, we both have the same goals to be sure, be sure that our readers, our listeners, um, our audiences are getting the full story. Yeah. Well, I will say that I was, I have been so impressed by, you know, our job, my job is just to help support our users in the great work that they do. And what I saw is amazing analysis and amazing um bringing together of information and the information products, things like the Johns Hopkins dashboard, things like um, pretty much every state we work with doing really good work uh, to inform the public. I saw a lot of focus on transparency and on bringing data to constituents so that they could make the best decisions possible and so that they could understand the decisions that were getting made. I was really impressed. It was also really impressive to see, you know, there was a lot, there's a lot of different models and a lot of different analytical tools out there. And one of the things that I saw was really responsible use of those methods. You know, people were very much focused on, you know, looking at all the possibilities and weighing the pros and cons and taking everything for the good that it brought to the decision-making process rather than just saying, okay, well, we're just going to, you know, put all our eggs in this basket and move forward no matter what happens. There was a, it was a very, I saw a lot of really responsible decision-making happening that I was really proud to be a part of within the GIS community. Yeah. I'm also, I'm proud like you are in parallel. I'm proud of my colleagues who are out there digging on the spot, trying to get this information from the hotspots, from the information sources and relaying it to their audiences, you know, in a, in a clear and forthright manner. Um, and that's, that's all we can ask in our professions is to get that information out there clearly and efficiently. And uh, Lauren, I think that you guys are doing this fabulous work. So thank you very much for all you're doing and what Esri's doing. I'm glad to hear about what Esri's doing and getting refreshed on the company. Thanks so much. Thanks for being on eSpeaks. Really, really appreciate it. It was fun. Thanks for and having me. Okay, you're welcome. And for <laughs> everybody who's out there following along and listening to us today, thank you very much for joining us and have a great rest of your eWeek. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders. Thank you.